What's your story? Good morning. Uh, Skip Boo, the author, writer from New Orleans, Magnolia Projects, and this is my story. Tool everybody, you know. I'm like you from the Magnolia, like yeah. you know. Break it down, like you know, growing up in the Magnolia. Well, growing up on like in the Magnolia, on like for yourself. Um, for me, I ain't. It, it was rough. It was rough. I had. I come from a like kind of a dysfunctional family. My mom was on drugs. Well, she before she got on drugs, she was a hustler. She was in the streets, and from what I was told, she was. She was one of them New Orleans females that you hear about, like setting dudes up to get robbed and killed and all that. And that's only from what I heard from older dudes, but um, I had a rough upbringing, bro. Six of us living in the two bedroom house, you know what I'm saying? And I done, I done, I done been through it all. So like, I was just talking to someone about that, like you know, like a lot of people know, like like people sit your waist, like people yeah. were growing up, family on drugs, and I was yeah. like, it would happen, like it would happen mainly, it would, like through the '70s and like that in the right. in the '80s. Right. So like you know. And I also told a person that, hey, but most people whose parents was on drugs actually pushed harder to become something. Yeah. So, yeah. like, you know, like, explain, like, you know, going to school, your situation. Because, like, a lot of people know if, if your parents were on drugs, right. you was kind of, like, a little messed up. Yeah. And, uh, well, well, for me, it kind of, it, it pushed me to the streets. Because, like I said, my mom was in the streets, so I didn't really have that, that guidance I needed, like, to steer me away from that. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, by my mom in it, and dudes I looked up to in it, so that's that's the way I'm leaning towards, you know what I'm saying? But um like for me since since eighth grade, my mama got on drug when I think when I was in seventh grade. And from eighth grade on, I've been like really providing for myself. I done live with people before as me having to buy my own uniforms and all that type of stuff. I've been I've been taking care of myself like ever since. So you kinda be forced to to be a man, you know, even though you're in the streets or whatever. And like I always tell people like, you know, yeah, but you don't want to be in being like middle school and high school and, and having people call you dirty. Right. So you gotta right. get to what you go get to. Right. Right. You you know that's that's a big thing. That's big. Like you know they, they call it bullying now. But, you know we ain't look at it like you know you was getting ribbed or whatever it was called back then. But um, yeah, you ain't want to be in school dirty. You ain't want to be in school dirty. You don't want to be labeled as that. Yeah. <laughs> and because and because most people who had, like you know back in the day was called dirty, people still look at them like yeah. they're dirty. Yeah. Right. As a grown ass man, like, I remember that boy dirty. You yeah, might yeah. Tell me that. yeah you, it, it stick to you. It stick to you. <laughs> okay. So, you know, like, I always want to ask this question because, like, I hear other cities talk about it. So, and so when do you think, like, you know, if the crack epidemic really hit New Orleans bad, like, far as in the Magnolia? In the, in the 80s. Okay. In the 80s, because, like I said, I was a little boy uh, in the 80s. And, like I said, that's when my mama got on drugs. So, I remember that, you know, at the time when you're going through it, you don't realize what's going on. But as I got older and, like, you could look back on it now, that's when, like, for me, that's when things got messed up. Like, when my mama got on, on that crack, it was, that just, I remember, man, I remember days me begging my mama, like, to stop using drugs, you know what I'm saying? And I think about that shit now, and, and you know, and it, and it touched me, you know. I'm talking about, I done seen my mama in the big dog, man. Why, you know, why you doing this? You know what I'm saying? You know, I, it wasn't normal, you know. I couldn't even get my mom to come to school for me. Cause I ain't, you know, she was really like on crack. Right. And it was something new, like introduced. It was like damn yeah. the, and something like the pandemic just happened. Like, right. like people like, man, right. why like, you know, yeah. why is she moving like right. that? And like right. a lot of people wouldn't understand that if they never experienced that. Mm -mm. But this is my question. I always wonder, cause I cause like, you know, I never I never had no parents that nothing like that. But like, how was it like jumping in the streets? Like Kind of provide the same thing that you saw that your parent got on it. Like, dang, I'm serving other people, mama, and like also people that like like you also serving some of your partner's mama, right. and they looking at you like, hey, bro, I want you to serve my mama. Yeah. You don't so, look, you don't look at it like that. Right. You got to realize, like I was like, sweat, thir probably 13 years old. You don't look at it. You don't think about it from the. You ain't mature enough to think about it like that. You know, now I could be like, damn, you know, it was messed up. But when you doing it, you just trying to make some money to change the situation, and that that that's. Really, would it be? You know, you, you got to eat. You know what I'm saying? I had to provide for my mom and, you know, make sure she had food and uh, the bare necessities for his uh, uh, feminine hygiene products and all that. You know what I'm saying? I had to really take care of my mom and people don't know that, you know, and I was struggling. 
You know, I'm selling crack at the time, so I got to make sure she right up. So I try to look out for my little sisters, make sure I'm all right going to school. And, you know, it, it was it was, it was it was a lot, bro. And hey, you quickly had to become I'm like the man of the house. Not of the house, but I had to make sure my mom, because my uncle was hustling. Okay. And But he took care of himself and whoever he was dealing with, you know what I'm saying? I had to... I had to make sure mom was all right, because she was in the street. I'm talking about my mom was one of the ones, like, outside all night. She wasn't a functioning addict. She was, like, outside all night, pulling off stuff to try to, you know, to get high or whatever. Doing what you she know. had to do. Yeah, she was doing what she had to do. So, like, you know, being in school, still trying to, like, you know, maintain and, and hustling. Yeah. Like, when they had, I'm like, Caridi, I always want to ask somebody this. Like, when the people ask you, I'm like, what do you want to be when you grow up? All right, what did you tell them? I honestly, I never went to it. Oh. I never went to it. When they have all them things and the uh, parent-teacher conferences and all that, my mom and them, you right. know, I didn't want my mom to come because she was, like, she was gone, you know? That shit, like, quickly, like, took over her life. But um, I, I, I avoided all them things, but I didn't have nobody to come for me, you know? Gotcha. So, like, you know, growing up in the Magno, you know, like, most people don't know, like, everybody... I'm like stuck together but they had like you know different clicks different yeah. different parts so yeah. like kind of explain I'm like what section you was up you know from I grew up on the old side um, okay. in the Tyler Diner Code I come up with the uh, juvenile and all them Tur Turk come up under me but that's the side of the project I grew up on and over there and I know you probably saw what they were discussing how uh the old side new side right. thing and uh it, it, it was different old side was more laid back and the dudes off the old side, and I know we ain't on this, but this 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 is one of the big differences dudes don't see. The dudes off the old side that they got in the street, they got in the streets for the right reason, like really to make money, you know, try to fix their situation or whatever. And most of the dudes you know that's off the old side, we all kind of have like this laid back demeanor. You know what I'm saying? More of you be on have a defensive mentality. On the, on the other side of the project, it's more more offensive. Like, you hear they, they always into stuff or whatever. You know, that's just, that's like the big difference. But growing up over there, it, it was it was totally different than once I got on the other side of Magnolia, you know, and seeing how it was on that side. And so bring me back to, like, the early 90s when they had DJs and the project and different things like this. Like, actually, I don't know when the beef started with, like, all the different projects, but, like, I want you to bring back when the Magnolia and the Cavalier was, like, tight. Cause you like, if it's most people like don't really know that like, a lot of these people are actually I mean can't see each other. Yeah. And like everybody just thought it was always a yeah. beef. No, it wasn't. It wasn't always no. Like when we was younger, we didn't we didn't we we didn't have no issues with uh with the Calio. We we always fought against like it was like this the Calio, the Magnolia and the uh, Melphamine. We got together and like we had like fight with the same tones. You know what I'm saying? That was that was the thing. All of us was sticking together like this around parade season or whatever. You know, we'd get together, click up at the same time. But they used to have like a thousand people, so you're gonna need all three projects. You know what I'm saying? Like to fight against them dudes or whatever. But the beef, most of the beef started like when we got in high school or whatever. I wasn't when uh when the Cali on the Magnolia thing, I was locked up for that. But the Melf, we used to fight with the Melf at uh at Wilson because they had them, a lot of them came now. We we consider Wilson our school because it's right by the project. But um, that's how a lot of that, that started from the fights, school dancing, and things like that. So, I'm like, how old were you? I'm like, when you first got, I'm like, locked up. The the very first time. Yeah. <laughs> Man, like, probably twelve or thirteen. And I, let me tell you what I went to jail for. We was uh we was about to get on the bus in the uh. The lady was she was picking certain people that she wasn't letting get on the bus because it was it was super crowded. So um I was one of the ones that she picked, like he you know, he ain't getting on the bus or whatever. I don't know what the reason was. So I went snuck on the back of the bus. So while we on I had firecrackers. So uh while I'm on the bus I lit a I lit a thing of firecrackers on the bus so they went to pop and people screaming and the bus driver stopped letting everybody off and I had on the uh, colorful polo. And uh like probably about thirty minutes to an hour later the police come pull us over and they took me to jail for that. Mm -hmm. Popping firecrackers on the bus, bro. Stupid <laughs> shit. <laughs> and so how long did you do like in no jail? I ain't I stayed in jail like one day for that oh that's good yeah my yeah. uh my partner read his sister Dulce and uh she came sign me up but my first time going like for something serious I think it was like 91 
I went to jail for crack. And I stayed in, I was in a CYC for like probably six six months or some shit like that. And then I, uh, when I got out, I went live with my uncle because uh, they couldn't release him to my mom. She was she was fucked up at the time. And uh, so they released him to my uncle. I had to go live across the river. And I lived on the West Bank for like a year, like a year and something. And so, you know, I always want to ask somebody, like, if, if how was that like, like, because, you know, if everybody don't actually give, like, the West Bank, they, they, they different flowers yeah. and different things like that. Like, how was it, like, the transition living from the Magnolia and, like, going on the West Bank? It was, it was different. Like, that side of the, at, at that time, it was like going from the old side to the new side. You know, because when I, I didn't know, I didn't know nobody over there. I didn't know nobody, and they used to call me Booker T over there when I first went to, uh, I went to school there to uh, Landry. Oh, you yeah, um, in Yeah, I was in Algiers. It was... It was still all these parents. Yeah, it was, just, it was just different, though. It was it was, it was was different. I'm talking about far as the way they talk, the, the way they dress, everything, it was just different, you know? And it was, most everybody I knew that went to Landry, they was, um, most of them, like, seemed like they came from good family, even the dudes out of the Fisher Project. But uh, it was, it was, it was different. It was different. Okay. I wanted to ask you that. So, um, going to jail for Craig, coming home, like, you know, like, because, you know, everybody, on um, like, first jokes I heard, you know, yeah. if you try to have that plan, like, right. I ain't going back. So, like, did you try to get a job when you came back? You went, you went straight back to the project and did what you were doing. That don't, that don't necessarily be the mentality. Like, you know, like I said, I, I was introduced to the streets first you know right. so having a job it, it was never i was in there trying to find ways to do it slicker right. you know what i'm saying to be honest with you i, I never thought about going to get no job I, I was young and i'm like you know the way i got busted i'm like i, I can't do that no more i'm gonna try it this way this time you know and that was always my mentality right. so you know the last time when you came home you yeah. know like i don't know like i want you to bring me back like if you wrote a book i'm like in jail or you actually wrote one i'm like out of jail i wrote I wrote five books when I was your first book. Yeah, I was, okay. my first the the book I put out. That's not the first. That's that was the fourth book I wrote. Okay. I have a uh, uh, I wrote a trilogy called uh, Hustling Backwards, and uh, but I wrote I wrote five books when I was in jail. I wrote where well, I wrote the trilogy. I wrote Chain Reaction one, and I wrote a book called uh, Probable Cause, and I only put out Chain Reaction because one of my partners he was like, man, you got to cater to the females, and those books cater more. You know the female readers or whatever, but um, it was um, it was uh, I was just trying something. You know those books are real popular in the uh in the prison system, and uh, I had read one of the books one day, and you know a lot of dudes they were going crazy about it. like they passing around, passing around. I'm, and I, but I finally read the book. I'm like, I could, you know, I could do this, you know, because I, I know I got you know some uh more stories to tell. And so like you know. Yeah, before I becoming one, I'm like, well, before I becoming one, I'm like book author, like, and yeah, but tell us your, I'm like process, I'm like with that. Well, with me, with uh, when when, when I write, I really kind of put the whole story together in my head before I actually start writing, like like from beginning to end. So it's really, you know, getting that getting that together, cause the for me the ending when I first started writing, I didn't know how to end the book. You know what I'm saying? I, I would just kept just kept on writing, kept on writing, but. That, that's that's how I do it now. That's my process. I, I kind of put the story together from beginning to end in my head. And then I, you know, start the writing process. And, you know, as you write, you know, it, it really it stretches it out. That's all it is. You know, you can have a thought, thought, you know, you can write thoughts down on papers, you know what I'm saying, forever. You know, but that's that's the process I use. Gotcha. Yeah. So, like, if a full person who, if who's probably watching this interview yeah. in jail right now, hey, but, like, how do you actually go about I'm like becoming one, I'm like book author, I'm like while being, I'm like locked up. The thing I, I would tell anybody is don't don't focus on the like trying to get published or whatever. Just write. That's the that's the main thing. Cause I, I have people hit me up all the time right now. You know they, man, I want to write a book. I don't know. I'm like, man, just start. Best thing to do is just start writing. You know, don't worry about all the other parts or whatever. You know that part it it'll get figured out. You know what I'm saying? But cause that's how I was. Like when I came home, I had the books. I didn't know how to go about getting it published. You know what I'm saying? And I was like trying to figure out ways to do that, trying to look on the internet. And I ain't have no help. So, you know, I just kind of, I just figured it out. I just figured it out. But the, be the, the most important thing to do is just write. Start putting your story on paper or whatever. Okay. 
So we're gonna bring it back onto the streets. Yeah. So you know, some people, I'm like affiliate you. I'm like with the I'm like doing it, boy. So like actually, I'm like where you want. I'm like doing it, boy. I'm like doing it with just your friend. Now doing it was my. I was I wasn't the doing it, boy. Doing it was my friend. And uh, but me, him, and my partner Wap, we started that that thing together. But me and me and doing, we ran we ran head up the whole time. Like you know, all this was out there. But the doing the doing it boys, all of them was younger. The oldest one was like seventeen probably. But everybody else, they were like between twelve and seventeen years old. So like you know, on a positive though, like yeah. you know, speaking for doing it a little bit, it like you know helping you know start that like. If we y'all just trying to grab. If some young dudes and try to basically show them how to get some money for the like to actually better their like situation. Yeah, that, that was that's all it was. That's all it was. If you think, I know you probably you probably don't know many of them, but all them little dudes, all of them had their own issues. And with me doing it and why all us we share similar pain for us. Our mom was being on drugs, or mom was dead or whatever. And all most of them they was going through the same thing. Mom on drugs, or either they you know they, the situation just messed up. But the the goal that was the goal to. And uh, at first we was on some like once we got our money up, we was gonna reach out to dudes like from our from our era, our generation, like to put them on or whatever. But and I'm and to be honest with you, doing it was like no man, we ain't messing with them because you know they've been out here all this time. We've been in jail and they still ain't got nothing. So and it kind of just happened. It wasn't no plan or nothing. You know, it it just it just came together and that, and that's just what it was. Gotcha. And so you know. Bring me back to I mean, 99, but I don't know if you was in jail or not, but or like, you know, 97 to 99, yeah. when, you know, Juvenile first popped off and, like, put the Magnolia on the map yeah. in the world. Yeah. Like, you know, I want to know, were you in jail or you was home? I was home. I was home for 99, but uh, in 97, I was locked. I was gone from, from 95 to 99. Okay. So, like, I want to hear, I mean, what your experience was like, like, just seeing the Magnolia on fire, like, the world knowing Knowing about the Magnolia yeah. projects, we didn't at the time. We we didn't feel it. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Cause like I said, I grew up with Juve. We didn't in the project. We didn't look at Juve like how the world up there. You know, he just regular dude. Like I done seen Juve fight and everything. But um, when I got out of jail, they was already straight. When he, he heard I was home, he can't pick me up. Man, I just talked to him about this recently. He uh he sent word for me to get in touch with him. So I went by the they had a store called Keys, but they still have it. I went over there. And a uh, dude called him for me. I talked to him on the phone. He asked me where I'm gonna be. I said I'm gonna be on uh on Magnolia, Washington. He came pick me up. I had, I had been out of jail like by probably two weeks at a time. He came pick me up, rode around for a little while. He wrote me a, me and Doug Lou, my matter of fact, he wrote me a check for fifteen hundred dollars. And uh, he know I ain't had shit. You know he 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 been knowing us. You know we've been knowing each other since we was kids. Like, but um, far as them, it. Them blowing up, I mean, it brought a lot of people in the project for us, tourists and things like that, but we wasn't, you know, we wasn't, like, excited about that or nothing, you know. I was happy for him, but we wasn't on that type of time. Okay. So, you know, like, I just wanted to always ask somebody, like, yeah. you know, who was actually old enough to, like, actually remember that, yeah. that um, you know, at that time in the Magnolia. Yeah. So, okay. So, basically, you know, then, you know, but a few years later, Juvenile become independent, and like I just realized who and who like Wacko was talking about. Yeah. Like tell Wacko, well, and tell the and DBs. Yeah, and tell yeah. the DBs. Wacko looking for him. Like yeah. I didn't realize he was talking about the Doom yeah. Boys. Yeah. I thought he was talking about Stone and Lack. No. <laughs> so, no. so no. like you know, like actually, what was the impact uptown on like for the Dooney Boys? Like for your knowledge. Well, well, first the impact was uh they was young dudes making money, right. but uh, it that's what it was all about. Cause um, I remember uh the Dizzy Dizzy Garza the day he uh that was Warrior brother he um he he used to go to school with all his money in his pocket and uh something happened when I don't remember who it was he was arguing with somebody and he was, he was like all he kept saying bitch I got more money than the principal you know that was his thing you know he always was saying that but. Like I said, the impact at first, they was live. They was just young dude. They was making money. You know, they was 13 years old. They were able to go shopping, sex, and, you know, that was it was a good feeling, you know. And I felt good seeing them able, you know, being, you know, to uh, do those things. You know, at that age, you know, they, because you got to think about, like, around that time, Pradas and stuff like that, people was on, like, if you wasn't in the street, you was getting that on holidays. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, mama buy your pep 
for uh, Christmas or something like that. Like they was able to go buy that whenever they wanted to. You know what I'm saying? So, but later, I was in jail when they became when they be, you know grew, and some of them like Johnny boy, I heard he was kidnapping and doing all this. Then stupid, he became you know who he became and. That, but that's not who they were, and that right. wasn't our intentions for them, you know, once they came, like, was under us or whatever. Yeah, y'all, so basically, you know, if y'all intentions was to basically, like, I'm about to show these little dudes I get some money, yeah. so they better their situation, yeah. and they could, you know, they could figure it out on their own. Right. Okay. Right. Because I used to always tell them, like, we was on, because we knew sooner or later we was going to jail, and I used to always tell them, bro, y'all save y'all money, because, like, what y'all gonna do if something happened to me or doing it? Always, always preach that to them. But you know they, you know when you when you get older, you know you find your own way. So, so you know, and before you know, and with your last juice, you know you come home, and with a plan. So yeah. like you know, did you come home with a plan like you know I'm about to make sure the books get out, I'm about to start a few businesses, such and such like that. With with the books, yeah. But as far as business, I'm not gonna lie. When when I was in jail, I wasn't. I wasn't really educating myself like I should have, you know, for as trying to do that. All I knew I wanted to put the books out. I just had on, I'm going to work. You know, I'm going to work. I'm not getting in the streets or whatever. But, um, you know, when you come home and, like, that reality hit, and I, I tell all my friends, that's, like, I got a few friends that's still in jail, and I tell them, like, but that shit not going to go the way you write it down in them tablets. Because all of us had, to, like, we'll get a composition notebook and we're writing everything that we're going to do when we're going to go home, try this and, and do that. that shit, it's not going to go like that. And, I, you know, I'll be honest with them. It's not just gonna go the way you think and it's gonna go. It's hard out here, especially for dudes that been in the streets all their life. Like, that was my first time ever having a job, like when I got out of prison. And it took for me, it took that for me to understand why relatives couldn't see me money every month. Like, that shit is a struggle. You know what I'm saying? And you, like I say, you've never been in the streets, so you never had to manage money like that. For as however, however much you're making every two weeks, it's, it's different. And that shit had to, that shit, it really shook me up. It was a hell of a uh, reality check for me. Like, I never had a bank account. I never had a credit card. You know what I'm saying? It was, I had to make that adjustment. Like, I had to learn. Like, my life had really just started when I got out of prison. And so you never even, so you never have it, like, as far as your credit, it was just like, they like had I was the on host. It. Yeah, I didn't even <laughs> exist. You know right. what I'm saying? So, you know, like I said, bro, it was. Never feel taxes out of nothing. Just, nothing. just a ghost. Remember right? that. Came, out of, came home as a ghost. <laughs> nothing. You know, and like I had to learn. I had to learn, bro. It was hard. I had to learn how to manage money. You know, because you know when, when dudes be in the streets, it's it's cool. it's easy to look out for everybody, especially the money. You know, we was making at the time. You know, what I'm saying it, it was easy. So when you come home, you get this shit. You see, I saw my first check. It was like five hundred and something dollars. I'm like, man, what the, what the fuck am I do with this? You know, what I'm saying it was it woke me up. It woke me up. So like you know. <laughs> Like, I want to know, I'm like, what's your advice to someone, like, you know, if you could bring it back to, like, you know, being 12 again, yeah. you know, when your mom, you know, you feel like you had to hit the streets, like, what's your advice to someone now, you being older, to actually, someone thinking about going in the streets, and like, what's your advice to how to move in New Orleans? <laughs> My advice would be, if you can, go live with a relative that don't live in New Orleans. Man, the city, the city messed up, bro. And people try to, everybody try to, you know, say if, if this was like this or if they had more uh, community centers or more, you know, man, it's a lot got to be done in this city, man. And, and it start with the parents, you know what I'm saying? But I would, I would tell them like a 12-year-old, man, get your education and try to, and try to hopefully find somebody, the right type of mentors or whatever, and man, try to figure life out, man. All right. So, you know, Coming home also this time, like, and what's the difference in New Orleans from the early nineties, far as I'm like right now? The mentality, the mentality, and, and I'm gonna speak for the for the for the dude that's in the streets. The mentality, um, when I was young, like I said, when we got off the porch and got into the streets or whatever, it was about making money. It was about nigga one thing about no beefing. Cause I remember my, my first few years, I ain't I don't even remember having a gun. You know what I'm saying? Dude, they jump off the pool now and straight have guns and you know and kidnapping and uh call jacking and you know you know they ain't they ain't really focus on making money. Like and that's that, that should be the per if you're in the street, you should be trying to make money to uh change the situation. Right. I just think it's a whole different type of world now, cause like yeah. you know, when, like when I was younger, you have to at least know how to fight before you even get exactly. a Exactly. Like they ain't fight, right. they, they ain't like, fight they, no more. If they skip that, 
they ain't, no, they ain't the point they ain't fighting more. They never had no fights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they never had a fight too. So when they go to jail, that's why they first fight. Yeah. And, and, and also on that, it's like, why fight? We might well get to what's gonna come next, cause there ain't no fight right. and, and dapping it off and like you got me that time or whatever. It ain't it ain't like that. It's cause you didn't know after the fight, you know it's gonna go to to another level. So why fight? We just gonna straight go. Let's go straight to where it's gonna get at. Right. And that's just that's how it is. And it's just it's different. But the craziest thing is too, like a lot of people, like if there's multiple sides to prison, people don't yeah. know about. Cause it's like you could be for this person forever, but. If you go to prison up the road or something, yeah. y'all gotta find a way to yeah. coexist. Cause yeah. y'all got a whole other enemy. Y'all gotta worry about yeah. the fucking area nation. Right. Different cities right. not rocking. Cause you gotta rock with each other if you're yeah. from a certain part. Yeah. That's in the fans, though. Right. Yeah, I was talking about, but they got different yeah. little gyms. Yeah. yeah, cause in the, in the state, it, it ain't like that. Like, right. do, do, some, in some places you have to. Cause it's like, it could be New Orleans and Baton Rouge against Shreveport or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It might be New Orleans getting, you know, but most dudes from New Orleans and Baton Rouge, they kind of, Stick together, but and you might be have New Orleans from New Orleans. Like it said, me and somebody I'm beefing with from all the night water somewhere. We ain't be able to live around each other. You know what I'm saying? Unless the the older dudes be like, y'all y'all gonna fight or whatever, and you know they y'all dead. That you know y'all. That's what I'm saying. Like you gotta learn. Yeah. How, you gotta learn yeah. how to coexist yeah. some kind of way until you hit the streets. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. So I'm asking you this question. Like I, I'm a firm believer in this. Like, do you believe? What's done in the streets should actually hit the internet because I see so many people talk on these interviews and like it's just certain things like it's like it's like certain interviews I wouldn't do yeah like first with me but like I want to know how you feel about it I don't I don't knock it, it, it certain certain things I don't knock like if you can't get you locked up cool but it like I said it's cool for the dudes to talk about the old story as long as it ain't gonna bring them no the, uh like on respawn the beef or whatever you know what I'm saying because like I said you know something that we were talking you know shit it's 99, 2000, you know, that's a long time ago, but it ain't, it ain't to the point to where, and then again, I can't say that, because it, it done been, since some of my, my homies done done interviews, dude be talking like, man, they, they tripping, brother, you know, they gonna bring up their old stuff, but I don't know, bro, I don't, it, it's, I don't know. Like this, like, this the way I think, like, you on these interviews, you older, you feel like, okay, man, right. they about to beat the game, yeah. they ain't messing with me, like, man, it's old, but you gotta realize that these dudes got sons, yeah, little cousins, yeah. the brothers that's in the streets, heavy, right, and they ready to knock your brain yeah. off for talking about you. Yeah, you probably was involved in it. Yeah, and I don't think they got to that point. Yeah, yet. you're right. And you know, certain things, like especially when you're talking about bodies and things like that, it, I think them conversations like that should be off limits or whatever. Right. You know, what I'm saying it's certain certain things. Nah, I don't even. And then a lot of these people that do these interviews, they ask you them type of questions. And because they know it's gonna get raised. Exactly. For the you know, they ain't thinking about what could come from this. And it'd be a lot of dudes, like you from here, it'd be a lot of dudes that's that's not from yeah. here. They ask you them questions, they don't know, you know, this shit is real. And we five minutes away from each other. Yeah. Everywhere we go. Yeah. Everywhere everybody go to the same clubs. Same, the same area. Yeah, everybody, <laughs> like like you say, five minutes away from each other. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm actually outside every day for real. So yeah. I, I, I I can't see me just Doing no shit that I would like. Right. If I if I believe I stand on it, right. I ain't tripping. But right. I just certain things I ain't messing. With. Right. Right. And like right. you know that's it like like that's why I kind of ask you, and like what the other interview like the other dudes be doing interviews yeah, yeah. and like where they from. Yeah. Because I can't see nobody who live every day doing no. those type of interviews. They, they shouldn't. They, they are no better. I feel like they are no better. Cause they right. you know like I say you know that shit can spark back up. It don't matter how old it is. Like you say, it, it been blood been shared about. A lot of them beefs and stuff, you know what I'm saying? And some people still feel it, you know, a certain way. Exactly. You know, no matter how long ago it was. Because there ain't no time limit on, you know, how you feel or if somebody messed over you or your dad or something, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. There ain't no time limit on it. <laughs> gotcha. So, and so tell us, so tell us, all right, what's next for you? Man, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm really trying to get it together. Like, you know, there's a lot of things. I'm trying to mess with real estate and uh, me, and, me and a few of my partners, we put a, uh, I like the investment group together. We all put some money together. We bought a lot. We are trying to get a house built on it, you know, so we could sell that and hopefully just keep it going from there. You know what I'm saying? But with my books, I uh, even though I, I never put the other the other four books out that I had wrote already, I'm uh, in the process of writing another book, but it's going to be a uh, erotic book, book erotica. So, you know, just really to cater to the females. But um, it's a lot I want to do, bro. I just, I don't want to be in my 50s and 60s worrying about a job. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, got to go fill out a job. I don't want to be like that. You know, I'm trying to get this residual income, you know, all kind of things. But I'm, I just got to put it in motion. Like, it's in motion. I just got to keep my foot on the gas, that's all. Gotcha. And, um, and, I, and I also got to ask this question, though. Know, since you wrote the books and everything, mm -hmm. everything like that, do you plan on, I'm like, making one, I'm like, movie out of it or... Or like making one on a YouTube series or anything like that? I want to, but to be honest, I don't have the know-how. You know, people always tell me, man, write the script. You know, my partner Sam, he's standing in Atlanta, he always tell me that, man, write the script. He like, you're going to put it in certain people's hands or whatever. But I I had looked at the uh, the format for writing the script, but I never actually sat down and, you know, like started doing it or whatever. You know, it's, the, the timing be a big issue. You know what I'm saying? You know, I got to gotta make money, you know? And just to sit down two, three hours a day, it ain't, it it's ain't hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, ain't, it ain't that easy. Like, when I was in prison, it was, I ain't got nothing else to do. So I could sit on my bed, you know, four, five hours and just write, you know, tell my hands start hurting or whatever. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't that easy like that. Gotcha. And also, um, but last but not least, tell everybody, only what can they find on social media and just everywhere. Yeah, well, um. My Instagram is uh, Skibu the Author, S-K-I-B-U underscore the author. And my Facebook is uh, Magnolia Skibu, but that's where you can find me at. But uh, sooner or later, I'm going to be, uh, Gang said he trying to, Ben told me, man, start a, start a podcast. Him and uh, the twins, the twins too, they got the uh, Think, Think Twice podcast. I'm, I'm going to start my own podcast. I have a lot I be wanting to talk about. Not just no, no street stories or right. nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? And I, I feel like Dudes in the city, we should be making money off our stories. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't saying the dudes that just lived it like you, you know, you're from here. You know, and I always say, bro, they, they, we need more people out here, you know, to tell our story. Because for whatever reason, people are interested in New Orleans. And, and especially with these dudes out of the projects or whatever. I don't know why, but, you know, I feel like, you know, it's time for us to tell our own stories and make money off it. Gotcha. I mean, I appreciate you for coming. Ain't no problem, man. And that's your story. What's your story?